think I will uh, misuse the opportunity as a chair to ask you a question. You have already talked about uh, cyber uh, attacks and cyber war and, and issues pertaining to that. I would just like to hear you talk a bit more about uh, be Estonia being a, a digital state. Um, what are the main benefits and what are the main challenges uh, connected to the security situation in the Baltics? And, uh, and also one more question. What do you see as, uh, as uh, uh, the most pressing needs in the international community when it comes to the stability of global cyberspace? Mm -hmm. Uh, international community has taken many steps in uh, in defining uh, how global cyberspace could be secure and the most important takeaway from both Tallinn manual process uh, which is a legal academic discussion over cyber security in international sphere and elsewhere also United Nations for uh, the biggest takeaway is that if it applies in analog world it similarly applies in the cyber world uh, and uh, it's mostly you can read uh, Tallinn manual one and two one is for war related situations two are for those situations which are below the threshold uh, you can you can read them and and you need to start thinking also uh, well every every country to themselves what they would consider an attack and and how they would then retaliate and we need to continue developing of our understanding. But it's always based on this principle. Analog law applies in the cybersphere. So uh, I believe that's a very important element of the defense. Then comes the uh, uh, more personalized elements of defense. And here I would like to uh, not to talk about defense only. Uh, as always, military is far ahead technologically in understanding the risks. So in cyber domain, which is a separate domain, we know quite a lot about how to defend uh, systems and what we need to do. But I'd, I'd, I believe that therefore the bigger risks actually lie in cyber hygiene, which is a term I like to use uh, talking about normal people in normal internet. But frankly, there is no difference if all our refrigerators are connected to the internet and, uh, and something goes wrong with them, you may have uh, as big a disaster as you have on uh, on attacking uh, vital systems of, uh, of country. So we need to teach our people uh, how to be hygienic. And uh, you may say it's not possible, but after all, we all taught our, our population centuries ago with far less uh, developed communicational means uh, that you need to have hygiene in general. So teaching cyber hygiene cannot be that different. And we have an encouraging story indeed, referring to the digital society, what Estonia is. There was a, something which you might call a, a global, a global uh, uh, test. It was called WannaCry, zero attacks in Estonia. Because the society is dependent on digital tools. Society uses digital tools to sign contracts, to communicate with government. So of course we know to update and of course we know to keep our password secrets and the physical token uh, away from passwords, etc. So it can be taught. We are an encouraging story in this sense. And indeed, since we already know from 2007 that your digital state can come under attack, we have taken several measures. Latest of them, and maybe most interesting, is creating a, a digital embassy in Luxembourg. Uh, it will have uh, uh, all the characters of an analog embassy. Uh, uh, the data there will belong to us. Its security and untouchability is guaranteed. We have just uh, returned a copy of that treaty last week uh, from Luxembourg to Tallinn so that our uh, digital copies of our state uh, will be elsewhere available as well in case the main copy comes under attack. And there are several other elements which of course need to keep in mind while operating digital society. On the other hand, moving data about the nation in a digital format must be simpler nowadays than trying to copy all your papers and, and have them somewhere safe place and elsewhere. The biggest challenge of digital society um, obviously is to convince all other societies to become digital as well and uh, make the free trade and free services and free movement of people and everything which we have in analog world also available to us in the uh, first in the in the European Union and then also uh, wider. I give you a few examples why this is so important. For example, if you have a law which says and this law exists, I'm not saying in which country that the data underlying uh, tax declaration needs to be in the country and available. And this, if applied to the digital sphere, you cannot even hire an auditor or a bookkeeper from another country, whereas otherwise it would be perfectly feasible to do. So if you didn't have that law, you would have free market, but since you have it, 
you don't have a free market in, uh, in this particular case for services. And this is holding back uh, our continent quite considerably, we feel. So I'm happy to report that uh, during Estonian EU Council presidency, we got the feeling we'll get the, re uh, the, uh, the, the uh, reaffirmation by the leaders, uh, we hope, quite soon when uh, we have presented the uh, presidency conclusions of Tallinn Digital Summit uh, that we will now move in Europe to create the fifth freedom. It's, of course, always possible to just uh, execute fifth freedom by applying all the four freedoms case by case, but it's probably more time consuming. So we're going for the fifth freedom so that we could have a more digital society. But again, this cannot be done without making sure that our people and businesses are safe in the cybersphere. One thing is hygiene. What is the other element? The other element is safe identification. In analog world, you hope you all have your passports your government has provided you with them. So you go to another person with whom you want to sign a contract and identify yourself. For some reason, in digital sphere, most countries have left it to private companies for, to provide this identification. They do admirably well, but this is not a state-guaranteed system. There are countries in Europe, Denmark, Estonia, Luxembourg, Latvia, Finland, who do have digital identification means. But even our citizens cannot much use it cross-border. We have several agreements, for example, with Luxembourg that we recognize each other's digital signatures, but we cannot give them from the same computer. There is a technological obstacle, for example. So we have a lot of work ahead of us to make sure that our societies are digital. On the other hand, just to withdraw and say we don't go this way is not feasible. People and businesses are there. Governments, if they want to be important to people and businesses, need to be there as well. It's not that different, again, from street space, the cyberspace. It's dangerous. Street can also be dangerous. But to take adequate protection measures, highways are dangerous. You, well, put your safety belts on, airbags, and then you go there. Even if you know there will be risks, always there will be risks.